The power of sound. Sound is one of those things that tends to be in the background a lot of the time, like in a movie. Say you're watching a film and in the foreground you have the dialogue, okay that's a kind of sound, but speaking and the action. But the music is in the background and it's like the emotional narrative that induces certain feelings as you go through the story. So there's, there's always sounds in the background around us and often the time we ignore them and we don't notice the effect they have on us. So I, in this segment on, on the power of sound, I, I want to first want to give you a quick look at uh, I, you know, some of the sounds or some of the questions that come up. When is, is sound just physical? And we know that when we hear, our uh, eardrum is responding to the change in pressure as these waves come through the air. But we can experience sound in a completely non-physical environment, the world of dreams. You can dream about music, you can dream conversations, you can... sound exists on a purely mental level. So it's not just physical sound waves. It's got its own independent form, if you like. What was the first sound you heard? And if you just think for a minute, I think you'll realize we all heard the same sound first, which was the sound of our mother's heartbeat. At about five months in the gestation period, we, we, our ears develop. So we, we spend four months listening to mum's heart beating and listening to whatever her favourite music is or whatever's going on outside a little bit. What's your favourite sound? Do you have one? Maybe, maybe it's music, maybe it's something else. You know? Maybe it's the voice of somebody you love or it could be waterfalls. That's one of my favourites. How is sound different than sight? The big obvious difference to me seems to be that sight, we can, we can cut it off, like I can close my eyes and okay, there's still some light there but I can't see anymore, I can cut off the input channel. Sound is always there, you can't close off your ears, it's very difficult to. So sound is like there all the time and it's coming from all directions. So it's, it's a very different kind of experience, we can't control its impact on us nearly as much as we can site where we can choose where to direct our site. So, so sound affects us affects through vibrational resonance. It, the, the resonance of sounds affect our nervous system, our body and our chakras. You'll learn a little bit about what those are uh, in this course. They're the kind of energy centers in the body which are part of yoga philosophy. It's, it's kind of weird but it's interesting. And um, uh, it does, it seems to, to have a, a, a real element to it. And I mean, it's a metaphor, but at the same time, there's something real. Association. So we uh, associate sound, certain uh, ideas or experiences with certain sounds. So the heartbeat is a great example. Bird song is a really interesting one. Uh, human beings respond to bird song uh, with feelings of um, feeling safe. And that is, I think, because Normally, if you're in the, in the wilds, if birds stop singing, it means there's danger. So if birds are singing, it means everything's okay. And that's perhaps one of the kind of primeval reasons why we like bird song. It's not just because it sounds pretty, which it usually does. So we respond to sound emotionally. We associate certain emotions with certain sounds, like music that you heard when you were a teenager will tend to bring up certain you know, emotions and feelings, or music in a situation. There's this kind of association with it. And, and not just sound music, but other, other types of sounds. We associate them. So how do these sounds make you feel? Think about it for a second. Um, the sound of traffic. Uh, chalk on a blackboard, some people find that. Uh, balloon squeaking, I can't stand that one a door slamming, telephone ringing. So these sounds are all a little like aggravating or even disturbing. Conversely, the waterfall, the bird song we've talked about, wind in the trees, ocean waves breaking, your favorite music. So you can see how sound really affects us emotionally and prolonged sound in the background. If it's an irritating sound that can really create a lot of stress and affect our nervous system. 
So a lot, of, a lot of research has been done out of this. And since it's been found that musical vibrations make their impact on the entire... This is about music specifically. Musical vibrations make their impact upon the entire body. Being picked up by the nerves, the spinal column, and even by the bones. This is why people who are deaf can react to music. It has also been demonstrated that music affects the pulse, the respiration, and the blood pressure. But its deepest effects, and those from which most of its curative properties are derived, are mental and emotion. emotional. So Doran Atram, was, he's done a lot of work with music being used for therapy and for healing different types of mental, as he says, mental and emotional problems, but also physiological. And uh, this is actually used widely in, in hospitals and, and in medical care and through history as well. This is one of my favorites. It's a little profound, but so pay attention. because Well, it's written by perhaps the greatest writer in the English language in history, so he had a way with words. Music can minister to minds diseased. Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow. Raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with its sweet, oblivious antidote, cleanse the full bosom of all perilous stuff that weighs upon the heart. Doesn't that feel like a relief? Thank you, William Shakespeare. I am going to sing to you what is possibly the oldest song in the world. Now, this is a big claim, so it may or may not be true, but it could be. It's a contender. Nobody knows which is the oldest song in the world, but this is certainly uh, a Sanskrit passage. This is the English. I'm going to sing the Sanskrit. This is a Sanskrit uh, song, or, or it's a poem from the Rig Veda, which is, according to some uh, um, archaeologists or anthropologists, is um, 15,000 years old. So it's way before writing, it was memorized, passed down through thousands of generations. And this song is a song of spiritual unity that is sometimes sung together before meditation. So, to me it's called, We Let Us Sing Together. That's in English, and uh, here's the Sanskrit, and you can see the meaning. Sangha Chadwang Sangha Dadwang Sangha Manang Si Janata Deva Bhagang Jata Pue Sangjana na upasate samani va akuti samana hridayani va samana mastu omano. So that is possibly the oldest song in the world. Or it's one of the oldest anyway. The tune may be new, but I'm not sure. But this song is a mantra. It's a long mantra which, you know, not so easy to memorize. But most mantras are pretty short, like mantras used in meditation, which is, it's a word, you know, mantra is a word or a sound, usually in Sanskrit, like this song, and with some special meaning. And uh, they're used in meditation. Um, they're words that liberate the mind. That's the idea of a mantra, and they affect us through resonance and association, as all sounds do. And that's one of the things we'll be looking at in depth in this course. That's one of our major themes. And just something to take away with you from the Dalai Lama. Hard to argue with him. Without the use of mantra, the attainment of Buddhahood is impossible. 